All right, guys, this is your introduction to AutoCAD as well as the kind of how-to to do your first AutoCAD assignment, the draw a T-Rex picture assignment or the dyno assignment, uh, I'd call it. So to get started, you're going to need the handout. It says draw a T-Rex picture. It's in the dynos folder and the gray folders over there. And you need to open up AutoCAD. AutoCAD is this guy right here, this big A. I already have it open, so I'll pull it up right there. Okay. And a couple things about AutoCAD. So we look up here and we have our tools, okay? Line, polyline, circle, arc, all these things are great things to use. We also have uh, this guy right here. If I pull on this guy, we have uh, new, saves, uh, prints, etc. And we also have what's called the command bar down here. Now, Anything I type shows up the command bar. So actually the first thing you do whenever you open up a new AutoCAD file is you have to change the units. So to do that, I'm going to type units. And I type it and it shows up right here. Also it'll show up in the command bar as soon as I hit enter and I press enter. Again, there it is. Keep, the command bar keeps track of everything I do. And I need to change my units to architectural. And I will say OK. All right. Now, when you first open up AutoCAD, it has all these guys down here selected in blue, and I will we'll talk about what these things mean more as we go on. But for now, I like to uncheck all of them. So make sure none of these are highlighted. All right. So let's get started in AutoCAD. So AutoCAD works on what's called the Cartesian coordinate system. It has an x-axis, a y-axis, and if I was to hit this guy up here you would see it has a z-axis as well, you can go 3D. But uh, we're going to undo that, okay? And go back into here. So I need to draw this T-Rex, okay? So we're going to use some of the new commands. I'm going to use the line command. There's lots of ways I can pull up the line command. I can click on it, okay? And it'll always, on my command bar down here, it gives me instructions on what to do next. If I press escape, I could also have done L for line. And it brings up the line right here. And I can click, again, brought the line tool, it says line, specify first point. So command bar always gives us instructions and always keeps track of everything we do. So first point, and I'm going to go and I'm going to put in my T-Rex body. So the first coordinate it uses is 6, 8, meaning 6 on the x-axis, 8 on the y-axis. Oh, so I'll go ahead and type that in. 6, 8. Again, it shows up right down here, and I'll press enter. All right, and I can zoom out. If it doesn't show up, I can hit this top button right here, and it should zoom out. Oops. There we go. It will zoom out to it, and I just do that by scrolling the little ball on my mouse. All right, so 6, 8, and then I'm going to type in my next one, 5, 6. There we go. We're on a roll. 6, comma four and I'm just hitting enter to make it go so it went from this point to that point. That was five comma six. This one is six comma four. The next one is two comma negative four. And as you can see I can zoom out again. I'm starting to draw my T Rex. Zero comma negative five and so forth. Now I can go through and make you guys watch me do all these coordinates or I have saved version I've already done. There we go. And there's what my finished T-Rex does. Looks like uh, minus an arm, so I haven't drawn arm one intentionally because I want to show you guys what that looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Six comma three. Oops, sorry. I put line in. L for line. Then six comma three. Okay. Seven comma three. Seven comma two. And five comma two. Boom. There you go. That is what your T-Rex should look like. I just press enter one more time to get out of the line tool. I could have also pressed escape. Would also have worked. Now, let's look at how I'm fixing this T-Rex a little bit. So we got some lines that are crossed. We got some things that need to be fixed here. So I'm going to use what's called the trim tool. Just like everything else, I could type in a quick command TR for trim. Or I could go up here and I can select the trim tool right there. So I select trim. Okay, Just like everything else, it always gives me instructions. Select cutting edges. Well, I want to cut out 
this and this. So the cutting edge is actually, if I wanted to cut out this guy right here, the cutting edge is this line right here. It's like a knife slicing this part off. So let's see what happens. Click on it, and I press enter. Space bar, by the way, the same as enter. And now it says select object to trim. Okay, let's see what happens. Boom, easy. Now an easier way to do that would be have to would to have been to select more of the dinosaur. So there's a couple things in AutoCAD we should know here. One, if I'm not in any commands, and I know that because it just says command uh, colon, and I click and drag to the left, I get a green box. Green box does is anything the green box touches, it selects. Okay. If I would have clicked and dragged to the right, I get a blue box, see green, blue, and anything it touches that is completely inside the box will be selected. It has to be completely inside the box, so this leg is not going to be selected, watch. There you go, leg not selected. So that's a good little trick to know. Alright, so I'm going to select the trim. This is how I would I do trim most of all. I want to trim out this part right here, I also want to trim out part of the arm. So I'm just going to select everything in that area. I press enter, select object to trim, I'm going to trim that guy out, I'm going to trim that guy out. There we go. We've got the start of a good dinosaur here. Now a couple other things I can do is I can use my line tool. I can also use what is called my polyline tool, which is nice. Let me show you the difference. So oh, I'm going to press escape. I'm going to go back to my line tool real quick. And I'll show you the difference real quick. So I draw a little nice little shape there. And then I'll use my polyline and draw a nice little shape similar over here. Now, if I click on one segment of the ones I use to create with the line tool, I get just what the segment I select. Polyline tool, if I would have clicked it once, it selects everything. So these are all attached, and that is the difference. Uh, for the most part, polyline tool can also do some other cool things the line tool can't do. So let's use the polyline tool. And I want to draw some teeth. Now, I could go in here and just kind of get it. I want to wing it, you know, and draw some teeth, you know, starting on that corner right there. And back to this line. And, you know, I was pretty close, but as soon as I zoom in, I see, okay, wait a minute, there's gaps there. I didn't get it on there perfectly, okay? And you may think that's not a big deal, but when you go do some other things like color, that becomes a huge deal. It has to be snapped, is what we call it, to the exact ends and so forth. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to use my snap tool. So I'm going to start to turn some of these guys on down here. The one looks like a piece of paper with a little star in the corner. If you hold on long enough, it says object snap. That's the one I'm going to click on. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click on it actually to start with. I'm going to go to settings. I like to mess with these settings sometimes. And right now I have uh, extensions, intersections, endpoints, centers selected. I'm going to turn off uh, extensions. I don't need intersections. Centers is a great one. Endpoints is fantastic. I'm also going to use nearest because nearest is a really good one. There you go. So make sure it's turned on. Uh, polyline. I just did PL that time. Or I could have gone up there. And I'm going to get this little square that's going to be click on the end. Now I'm going to draw some teeth. Now I don't want my object snap on because it's going to mess me up. So I'm going to turn it off for just a second. It'll start snapping to things I don't want to snap to. And I'm going to draw some sweet teeth in here. I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to get this little hourglass. It means it's going to snap exactly to that line. Now I zoom in on that, and that is perfect. It doesn't matter how close I go, it's perfectly in there. Okay. Uh, I can give, show you some other things that I can do. I go polyline. And let's start here. Oh, I'm going to turn off object snap for a second while I draw these teeth. And this time I'm going to give a sweet snaggle tooth to it. So I'm going to use, again, command line always gives me, tells me what to do next. It's specified next point, or in this case, gives me options. Okay, I'm going to use the A for arc option. So if I just, whatever's capitalized here, if I push that, that is what will go. So I'm going to go A for arc. Now I don't really want an arc that looks like that. So I'm going to go look here. What other options do I got? Okay, second. This is going to give me a second point. And I choose a line on where I want that arc to follow through. Okay, and I click, and now I can give a cool snaggle tooth. Again, I don't want that 
want my tooth to come back down like this. So I'm going to go S again. Oh, turn on my auto snap. And I'm going to finish it perfectly right there. Okay, I can give my guy an eyeball. There we go. Last thing I'm going to show you guys before I stop is how to move this guy because when you guys do your next dinosaur, it's going to be right here and it's going to be overlapped, so you need to move him out of the way. So I'm going to select my whole dinosaur. I'm going to select the move tool. M also would have done it. I'm going to move my dinosaur over here. All right, guys, that should be it. Enjoy.